Welcome to Greenlee Library. My name is Danielle Applebaum and I will be demonstrating library resources that you will find helpful as you work on your term project for PCM 305. Let's get started. By the end of this session, you will be able to navigate to the library homepage from your MyFSE dashboard, identify newspaper resources utilizing the Greenlee Library Research Guides, locate access to the New York Times through the library's databases, and limit your search to a 30-day time span, register for a New York Times Academic Fast Pass to access the New York Times website, identify other databases for locating business and industry information, cite newspaper articles utilizing APA format, and request assistance if needed. Your MyFSC account provides a quick and easy way to access the Greenlee Library homepage. Begin by navigating to farmingdale.edu. Then, click the green MyFSC button in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Log in with your FSC credentials when prompted. Once you are logged in, you will be able to navigate to the library homepage by clicking Library on the vertical navigation bar on the left side of the page. Once you arrive at the library's homepage, you'll scroll down until you reach Featured Resources. From here, you'll want to click Research Guides. To make navigating our many digital resources quick and easy, the librarians have assembled easy-to-use guides arranged by subject area. As you can see, we've already created a guide entitled Newspaper Resources, so that you can quickly and easily locate these resources from a single location. Click Newspaper Resources. Once you arrive at the Newspaper Resources Guide, you will notice that you have a few options. You can search individual newspapers or groups of newspapers. Since your assignment requires the use of the New York Times, click the New York Times. When you arrive at the New York Times Access Instruction page, you will note that you have two options for accessing the New York Times. I will demonstrate both. First, you can utilize the ProQuest New York Times search interface. If you utilize this option from off campus, you will be prompted to log in with your FSC credentials. If you are on campus, you will enter the database automatically. Once you arrive at the ProQuest New York Times search interface, you can begin searching with or without a topic. Since you have been asked to explore themes and issues published within a 30-day period, you will click the Publication Date drop-down menu and select Specific Date Range. Specify your date range using the drop-down menus and click Search. If you have any questions with regard to the appropriate date range for your search, please consult your professor. As you can see, our search yields several thousands of results. However, we have a few options for narrowing our search further using the sidebar filters on the left side of the page. We will not go over every single filter, but I encourage you to experiment with limiting your search as you can always undo a filter if you are not satisfied with the results. First, you will want to consider limiting your search by source type. Click Show More to see all of the source types included in your search. It's important to remember that the New York Times produces a variety of content in a variety of formats. This filter will let you select which content you wish to include in your search. I will limit to newspaper content for the purpose of this search. If you have questions about the content that will fulfill the requirements of your assignment, please be sure to consult your professor. To limit to newspapers, I will simply click the corresponding checkbox in the Include column. We have already limited our search by date, so we can skip the publication date filter. Next, we have the publication title filter. The New York Times publishes a variety of content in a variety of languages. For the purpose of this search, we will limit our search to content appearing in the New York Times. The next filter is document type. Within the New York Times, different types of articles constitute different types of documents. This limiter will allow you to filter by type of newspaper article. Click Show More to see all document types. To limit to news articles, I will simply click the corresponding checkbox in the Include column. For demonstration purposes, I will limit to news articles. If you have questions about the document types that will fulfill the requirements of your assignment, please be sure to consult your professor. The next filter is the Subject Filter. This can be a helpful tool for narrowing your results to articles on a particular topic or getting an idea of what topics appear most frequently within your current result list. Begin by clicking More. You will see a list of subjects arranged by count. 
This means that the list is arranged from subjects with the greatest number of articles to subjects with the least amount of articles. If you intend to limit your result list to articles covering a particular subject, you may want to hover over subject and click the sort column alphabetically in ascending or descending order. Then you can use the scroll bar on the right side of the window to navigate to your preferred topic. For demonstration purposes, I will sort by count and limit to the subject covered in the greatest number of articles. When I have chosen a subject by which to limit, I will click the corresponding checkbox in the Include column. If you decide that you would like to undo a filter, go to Applied Filters and click the X next to the filter you wish to remove. When you are happy with your search, you can begin to review your results. Click the title of an item in your result list to view the item. In the upper right hand corner of your screen you will have several options. First, you can save the article as a PDF by clicking Save as PDF. Second, you can generate a citation for the item by clicking Cite. Use the drop down menu to select your preferred citation style from the list. Once you make your selection, the citation will be automatically generated. This citation generator automatically generates citations according to the 6th edition of the APA Publication Manual. Please be aware that automated citation generators are not always perfect, so you should always check your citation against a style guide for your selected citation format. We'll discuss how to appropriately format a newspaper citation according to the APA 7th edition a little later in this video. If you click All Options, you will see that you have the option to save to my research. This allows you to save and organize specific results into folders. You will need to have an account to do this. I'll show you how to create an account in just a bit. To save and organize a specific article, click Save to my research. Next, to save in, click the drop-down menu to select an existing folder or to create a new folder. Since I do not have a folder for this project, I will create one. To organize project folders, I recommend using the semester, course abbreviation, and a brief project description as your title. In this case, I will name my project folder Fall 21 PCM 305 Group Project New York Times. Then I will click Save. To view the contents of a folder to which I've saved my results, I will navigate to the upper right hand corner of the screen, click the person icon, and click Saved Documents. When you arrive on your documents page, you will by default see all documents. To navigate to a specific folder, click the drop down menu under Folder All Documents and select the folder you wish to open. Let's return to our search for a moment. If you cannot review all of your results in one sitting, you can save it along with its preset limiters so that you do not have to go through the process of filtering your search each time you visit the database. You can do this in two ways. First, you can obtain and save the link to your search by clicking the Save Search Alert drop-down menu and clicking Get Search Link. You can copy and paste this link into an email or a document, or you might consider saving it in your browser's bookmark feature. You can also create an account with ProQuest and save the search to your account. You can create an account by navigating to the person icon at the top right-hand corner of the page. Click Create My Research Account and enter the requested information to create your account. Once you have created your account, you can save your search to your ProQuest account. Click Save Search Alert in the drop-down menu and click Save Search. You can name your search and add a note. To keep track of your saved searches, I recommend using the semester, course abbreviation, and a brief project description as your title. In this case, I will name my search Fall 21 PCM 305 Group Project New York Times Search. To view my saved search, I will navigate to the person icon at the upper right hand corner of the screen, click the icon, and select Saved Searches. If you find you are conducting similar searches, you can always edit the search name to make navigating your saved searches easier. In addition to accessing the New York Times through ProQuest, you can also access the content of the New York Times directly from the New York Times homepage. To do so, you will need an academic pass. Let's return to the New York Times Access Instruction page. Review the instructions under the heading New York Times Academic Pass. To create an account, go to AccessNYT 
www.farmingdalestate.com. Search for Farmingdale State University of New York in the Find School box. Click Create an Account and use your farmingdale.edu email address. Once you have created your account, navigate to the newyorktimes.com and click Login in the upper right-hand corner. Once you have logged in, you can use the search feature to locate articles. Navigate to the magnifying glass on the left side of the screen. Click the magnifying glass and type in your search terms and click Go. To limit your search to a 30-day span, click Date Range and select specific dates from the drop-down menu. Use the calendar to select the beginning and end of the date range. You can further limit your search, if appropriate, by the specific section in which materials are published. Select section and use the checkbox to select specific sections of the paper. Finally, you can limit by type of item that will appear in your subsequent result list. Click type and select the preferred format. For demonstration purposes, we will limit to articles. Once you have limited your search, Please note that the default arrangement is by relevance. Depending upon your preferences, you may wish to use the Sort button at the top right-hand corner of the page. Here, you can sort from newest to oldest, or from oldest to newest. If you wish to search for articles within a specified time span without first conducting a keyword search, you can begin by navigating to nytimes.com search. This will allow you to search the page without entering keywords first. Be sure that you are logged in in order to review your results. When you are ready to view individual articles, just click the title to read. As part of your project, you may also find it helpful to utilize business and industry resources. We'll return to the library's homepage and scroll down until we reach Featured Resources. From here, you will want to click Research Guides. To make navigating our many digital resources quick and easy, the librarians have assembled easy-to-use guides arranged by subject area. In this case, we'll select the Business Research Guide. To find industry data, I suggest starting with Hoover's. Click Hoover's to navigate to the database. If you are off campus, you will be prompted to enter your credentials before proceeding. Once you have arrived in the database, click the box labeled Research Industries. Under Keyword, enter a search term for the industry in which you are interested and click Apply. Then, click View Results at the bottom of the page. Select the entry that best aligns with your preferred industry and click the title of the record or the parent industry. This will bring you to a page where you can review an industry summary, view news within the industry, identify key players in the industry, and review analyses. To locate scholarly peer-reviewed articles on your topic, return to the Business Research Guide. This time, we will select Business Source Complete. If you are off campus, you will be prompted to enter your credentials before proceeding. Once you have accessed the database, you will begin by entering your keywords in the search field. We'll continue with the same industry we researched in Hoover's, vaccines or immunizations. Because different authors use different words to describe similar ideas and concepts, placing or between two similar terms in our search tells the database that we'll take results in which the word vaccines appears alone, results in which the word vaccines appears with the word immunizations, and results in which the word immunizations appears alone. Then, click search. As you can see, we have several thousands of results. There are a number of things we can do to make our search more manageable. First, we can consider if we can add additional keywords. For instance, if we're interested in researching the relationship between vaccines and medical care costs, we could add the phrase medical care costs in the search field below our first keyword search field. When we click search again, this greatly reduces the number of results in our list. We can further limit our search, just as we did when working with the ProQuest database, by using the filters on the left side of the page. First, we will limit to full text. It is important to understand that while you may see an article appear in your result list, you may not necessarily have full access to this article. This might be because the publisher has embargoed the article, which means that a certain amount of time must pass before the article is made available, or it might be because the library does not subscribe to the portion of the database through which the article is available. To see only those articles which are currently available for you to view immediately, we'll limit by full text. Then, we will limit to scholarly peer-reviewed journals. The databases contain material from a variety of publications, including popular sources such as magazines and newspapers, and scholarly resources such as academic journals and conference proceedings. 
By limiting our search to scholarly peer-reviewed journals, we will only see results published in venues which require a peer review prior to publication. This means that before articles are published in these venues, they must be rigorously reviewed by other experts in the field. Then, we will consider limiting by publication date. Depending on your topic, you may want to consider limiting your research to results that were published within a particular time span. In this case, I want to look at the most recently published articles, so I'll limit my search to the last five years. Then, we will limit to academic journals to ensure that we are limiting to scholarly academic periodicals. As you can see, we still have quite a few filters we can work with. If you still feel you have too many results, the subject limiters can help you reduce the results by limiting the results to articles about specific subjects. For example, if we expand the subject filter, I can limit to articles that have been marked as being about medical care costs. Take note that a list of subjects by which you can filter your search is just a brief list. If you see the Show More link below it, that means that you have many more subject options by which to limit your search. If I want to undo this filter, I will go to the box under Refine Results and click the X next to the filter I wish to remove. We won't go into detail about the remaining filters, but feel free to add and remove them as you explore your results. If you cannot review all of your results in one sitting, you can save it along with its preset limiters so that you do not have to go through the process of filtering your search each time you visit the database. You can do this in two ways. First, click Share in the right-hand corner of your search. If you create an account, you can add the search to your Save Search folder, or you can copy and paste the permalink at the bottom of the menu to an email document or the bookmark section of your browser. When you are ready to view an item, just click the title. If available as a PDF, the document will be available on the left side of the screen. If not, continue to scroll to read the article. You have several tools on the right side of the page. We won't go over all of these tools, but we'll review Add to Folder, Email, Site, and Permalink. If you create an account, you will be able to save and organize an article in a folder by clicking Add to Folder. This is similar to the option we reviewed in the ProQuest database. If you click Email, you will be able to email a copy of the article to yourself. If you click Site, you will be able to generate a citation of the article in a variety of formats. Finally, there is the permalink tool. Clicking this will generate a stable link that can be copied and pasted into your email, a document, or saved in your browser's bookmark feature. For this assignment, you will be citing your sources according to the APA Manual 7th edition. First, let's look at the template for citing newspaper articles. First, begin with the author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the first initial of the author's first name, followed by a period. Then, in parentheses, you will place the date on which the article was published. You'll include the year, followed by a comma, followed by the full spelling of the month, followed by the day. The closed parentheses will be followed by a period. Then, you will format the title of the article in sentence case. This means that the first letter of the first word is capitalized only. The first letter of all remaining words will be lowercase, unless that word is a proper noun, or unless it follows a colon. This is followed by a period. The next element is the name of the publication in which the article has been published. This will be italicized and formatted in title case. This means that you will capitalize the first letter of the first word and all major words. APA defines major words as nouns, verbs, linking verbs, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, and all words of four letters or more. If the article is from a print source, you'll follow the name of the publication with a comma and the page number of the article. If the article is an electronic publication, or if it was retrieved from a database, you will follow the name of the publication with a period and include the URL or the permalink to the article. If you are referring to the reference in a paper, you will include a parenthetical reference following the information you have paraphrased and or quoted. If paraphrasing, you will include the following in parentheses after the paraphrased material. Author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the year of publication. If including a direct quote, you will include the following in parentheses after the quoted material. Author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the year of publication, 
followed by the page number from which you are quoting. If you introduce the author or authors as part of the text of the paper, you will follow this with the year of the publication in parentheses. Now let's look at the template for citing scholarly articles. First, begin with the author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the first initial of the author's first name, followed by a period. Then, in parentheses, you will place the year in which the article was published. The closed parentheses will be followed by a period. Then, you will format the title of the article in sentence case. This means that the first letter of the first word is capitalized only. The first letter of all remaining words will be lowercase unless that word is a proper noun or unless it comes after a colon. This is followed by a period. The next element is the name of the publication in which the article has been published. This will be italicized and formatted in title case. This means that you will capitalize the first letter of the first word and all major words. APA defines major words as nouns, verbs, linking verbs, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, and all words of four letters or more. You will follow the name of the publication with a comma, followed by the volume of the journal in italics, followed by the issue number in parentheses if available, followed by a comma, followed by the page numbers on which the article appears. If the article is an electronic publication or it was retrieved from a database, you will follow the page range of the article with a period and include the URL or the permalink to the article after. If you are referring to the reference in a paper, you will include parenthetical references following the information you have paraphrased and or quoted. If paraphrasing, you will include the following in parentheses after the paraphrased material. Author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the year of publication. If including a direct quote, you will include the following in parentheses after the quoted material. Author's last name, followed by a comma, followed by the year of publication, followed by the page number from which you are quoting. If you introduce the author or authors as part of the text of the paper, you will follow this with the year of publication in parentheses. If you need assistance locating resources or citing your sources, please don't hesitate to get in touch with a librarian for assistance. There are several ways to get help. First, you are welcome to visit the reference desk at Greenlee Library for assistance. The library is open seven days a week. Our hours of operation are 7.45 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 7.45 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, and 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Sundays. Please always be sure to check our homepage for the library's hours before visiting. The hours are subject to change due to holiday scheduling and inclement weather. If you cannot visit the reference desk in person, we recommend emailing reference at farmingdale.edu, which is monitored during our operating hours. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Greenlee Library at reference at farmingdale.edu.